the problem being researched here is a uh, bias in linguistic theory teaching that affects uh, intentions to teach language at school. Um, this refers to secondary school and uh, any additional language teaching or um, English L1 teaching, any point at which some language is taught and the intentions of teachers to incorporate linguistic theory in their teaching um, is what's being measured and uh, researched here. And the purpose, um, the, well the context of this is that the importance of not only linguistic theory but grammar has been played down in recent history um, with it being removed from curricula internationally generally. But what are teachers' attitudes internationally now to including a simple model of unbiased theory-neutral linguistics in their training, pathways to language teaching? Um, this builds on a Dutch study, um, however this measures the intentions of teachers um, internationally. Objective is to, the objective is to measure the intentions of an international sample of teachers um, which may or may not support the use of theory-neutral linguistics in teacher training and pathways and teaching. Um, so how do we propose to do this? Well, participants will be recruited through social media platforms to uh, gain a global reach and they'll all have a minimum of tertiary qualifications and a minimum of one year's teaching experience. Um, this will make our results more robust. Um, participants, uh, participation is incentivized by book gift vouchers. Um, from the social media platform, they'll be taken to a simple survey website where the knowledge base of linguistic concepts is assessed um, through a questionnaire. Um, this allows for any significant effects of linguistic naivety to be identified in our results and controlled for. As a pre-measure, participants are asked to answer on a scale of 0 to 100 how important they consider linguistic teaching uh, to be at all in, in teaching. So those who answer 0 um, will believe that linguistics is no, has no use at all in language teaching. Um, so that those results, who, those who answer 0, will be removed from results um, because this study tests the likelihood of using this linguistic approach, not whether one should be used um, however, the results may indicate a global attitude um, if a large majority answer zero um, or not, which uh, could be interesting to analyse. Um, the responses will be timed by the website um, in order to determine the reliability of the responses. So excessively long responses will be considered not sufficient for analysis um, on the presumption that the participant lacked engagement. So, with the remaining participants' data, and with the use of the Likert scale, uh, participants will be given four scenarios, and they're asked to answer between strongly disagree to strongly agree about their intentions in each scenario. So, for example, participants are shown a language teaching point taken from a real lesson plan, and in this scenario they must answer, um, I intend to mention biological and cognitive approaches equally with students prior to teaching parts of speech and sentence parsing, for example. Another example is teachers are shown a university unit guide about theory neutral linguistics and they must answer again, I intend to advocate the creation of this unit at university pathways to secondary teaching to anyone. Strongly agree or strongly disagree. Participants are randomly allocated into two groups. One group will be exposed to a summary of the Theory Neutral Linguistics model and, and a short instructive booklet on the Theory Neutral Method, um, citing the Dutch study uh, throughout as evidence of its efficacy. So the other group, a control group, will not receive exposure to that uh, material. However, they will receive um, exposure to heavily biased materials that while it contains cognitive theory material, it also acts to devaluate cognitive theory and strongly promote biological theory. Uh, this, this bias, the bias should be very obvious in the materials to the participants. 
So this automatic assignment to groups will be done as the participants are taken to the survey website, they'll automatically be put into those groups. Um, a post measure will be conducted and um, participants will repeat the initial survey where I will look for any effects of difference in the results after having been exposed to those materials. So the intention scores will be measured by creating an average pre-score and an average post-score and comparing them together. So after that, having done all of this, the expected outcome is that participants who are exposed to those theory-neutral materials will be more likely to include this model in their teaching. And the implications for this, uh, there are some more implications for longitudinal studies in which teachers perhaps receive more and more materials over time and um, receive training in a, in a, a theory-neutral um, approach. And there are implications for this to be implemented into curricula and there are implications for current approaches to linguistics at universities. <coughs>